Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. And today... We are reviewing the Lawa 15mm f2 lens, especially to astrophotography and time lapses. Now, in my camera over there is the 14mm f2.8 Sanwan Wan Yang. So the Sanwan Yang is here only as a reference. These are really different prices, so it shouldn't really be compared as the same way. Mathematically, this lens should be a little bit better than that one because it's F2, so if it's F2, it will pass through more light. I'm gonna test as well zero distortion that Lawa uh, talks a lot about it, it's some features how this lens works. So before we start, I need to talk about a little bit of history, so stick with me for a little bit. Now, this is the R6, it doesn't have a mirror. That means that the sensors, it's closer to the edge from here. That implies that the lenses are easier to make and will be higher quality in some way as well. The Samoyong, it's for Canon AF, this is for RAF, so the uh, Samoyong needs to have an adapter. So the adapter won't uh, change as much quality because it doesn't have any glass on it. It just is something to give some distance from the lens and communicate with the lens. Although both of these lenses has no communication, so there is no contacts on this thing to communicate. Every single thing is manual. One thing to actually see the difference between the RF and AF uh, lenses is looking at the back of the lenses. This is the Lawa, okay? And as you can see, the lens is pretty damn close to the edge, so it's very close to the sensor. Now if you look at the Sanwan Wanyang Wanyang with the adapter, you can actually see how deep and how far is the lens from the sensor. That means when the constructors of lenses are doing some lenses for some type of cameras, this is a limitation, all of this, almost two centimeters of difference to take in count. If this lens needs, usually it's zoom lens, if needs to be further away from the sensor, you just add a, a, a tube, but if you want to get closer, that will be a problem. So another thing about the, the R6 that it's a little bit annoying, and I imagine the R5 and the R itself, is that you have to activate the shutter release without a lens. That means as it doesn't detect the lens, the camera won't take pictures. That's very annoying. Well, you have to unlock that option or lock that option on the menu of the camera. So let's explore uh, this lens. Now, as you can see, we can uh, go from all the way to F2, all the way to F22. Nice. And I hope you did listen to that. If you don't want that, you have a the clickable mode and as so it won't click. So this for video it's pretty damn nice. And here is the focus ring. In the focus ring it's one of the things I think it's annoying about this uh, lens is that you can see that is infinity here and if you go just a little bit it was in one meter. With the Samwan Yong has the same thing and when I was using the Samwan Yong I know that between three meters and infinity, because the last meter that it show up on the lens is three meters. Between both of them, I had almost everything in focus at f2.8 until the infinity. And that four stars are really great. Now, this lens, not so. I mistakenly did that while photographing the Milky Way and I have the stars out of focus. So really push it to infinity with this lens. Amateur mistake, I know, but it can focus, now we can see that it can focus to infinity and now half a meter and then 15 centimeters. It doesn't look that impressive, but it is impressive when you take in count that the 15 centimeters starts here. Your camera has this point over here that this point is the where is the sensor and that is the reference to measure the focus point. So 15 centimeters is roughly around there. Quite impressive, so yeah, let, let's try that. Then I'm gonna try to focus like this, okay? Let's see what we g will get.
Besides that, there is a huge advantage with this lens. In this, it has some trails for filters. Most of the wide angles, I, I'm saying most of the wide angles, for example, the 16 uh, millimeters Canon 16 to 35 or 24, something like that. It has threads to attach it, but it's 16 millimeters. But this bad boy, as you can see, the lens is curved as so. This shape makes it almost impossible to attach some filters, as the lower lens can easily add some filters to make long exposures, I say, why not do some time lapse? So this filter will cut 10 stops of light. Check this out. It's magnetic. How cool is that? If you are wondering why this complicated tripod, it's because I want to attach a motor called SlidePod E from Moza, and this uh, thing will go up. As it's going up, I will do the time lapse with the intervalometer built in on the Canon. Now, this lens make huge claims about the D dreamer or zero D destruction, distortion. And well, we have to test that. And to test that, we only need to find a traditional brick wall to test the distortion. And yeah, let's find that. Yeah, let, 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 let's find that. Well, we didn't find really a brick wall. What we find, it's a volcanic rock wall. Okay. Let's start with the vignetting. At F2, of course, it has some vignetting, but very acceptable, very smooth to the center. But pushing down to F5.6, the vignetting disappears. Back to F2 and using the profile corrections of Lightroom under the name of Venus Optics, not Laua, the vignetting disappears. So this correction, it's pretty damn good and simple to apply. The level of sharpness is very impressive. In the center of all apertures is sharp, including F2, with the exception of F22 because it's uh, soft. At the corners is not as sharp, but very good for a wide angle. The chromatic aberration is very visible by default, especially on the corners. And the straightforward fix on Lightroom, the remove chromatic aberration works until certain point, which leaves a little trace of blue, almost non-visible, but very visible in the stars as it is necessary to use the defringe tool to get rid of it if you want let's tackle the bokeh now wide angles usually are not known for creating a lot of uh, autofocus areas but at f2 creating bokeh it's not that hard make the subject very close and boom if you reduce the aperture, it becomes noticeable that this lens only have five blades on the aperture, giving some sharp edges in the bokeh, uh, in the autofocus areas. And lens flare. Uh, well, what lens flare? At least I didn't find any <laughs> lens flare. And the big one, the so known zero distortion. Whoa, very good, no visible distortions. Comparing with the Samhwayang, and it's become more obvious how good the Laowa lens is. But if you really try to look at it, you will find it. Quite impressive, but the camera is leveled, it's 90 degrees to the wall, so it's helping a little bit. When it's not, the distortion behaves like any wide-angle lens. Of course, as much as we try, 
perfect wide angle lens with no distortion it's pretty damn almost impossible so wide angle lens always have always have a little bit of distortion or an exaggerated perspective let's call it like that uh, an ex exaggerated perspective and that is almost unavoidable except uh, maybe on tilt shift lenses but there is a little bit of distortion so what makes the lawa 15 millimeters f2 a really good lens to astrophotography when i say astrophotography is the milky way astrophotography there is a donkey there it's pretty damn simple, is the excellent 2.8 aperture. When I use the Sawan Young, I push the ISO on the camera to 3200 ISO. But between f2.8 and f2, there is one stop of light. That means that I have the same exact exposure, theoretically, if I use 1600 ISO with f2. That, that's mind boggling. Now, I already photographed with this camera in this lens, the Milky Way, and it went really bad because I was moving way too fast and not thinking what the hell was I doing. So one of the really bad things about this lens is how it focused. So between the infinity and one meter, it's just a tiny bit, a tiny, tiny, small thing. So pay extremely attention to focus and I missed some shots of the Milky Way because of that. So zoom in and be sure that your lens is in focus. And there we go, guys. So I can't wait to make more photos with the Milky Way with this lens. The distortion is a distortion. It has a little bit because it's a wide angle, whatever they call it, D-Dream or zero distortion or whatever. Lawa, it has a little bit of distortion, okay? It's visible, but it's not, not, not bad. It's really, really good. So I can't wait to photograph more pictures of the Milky Way with this bad boy. And let's finish the video show. Drop a like if you learned something, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I am Miguel, until next time, see ya.